Okay, we're off with guessing the level of the rating that we're playing against. So we're going to take this pawn here. As we mentioned, we'll never know because we're playing as a guest. It's a casual game. I'm actually going to attack the knight. Things look a little bit different here. I know we've not made space for our king castling. We might rue the day that we didn't do that. They do capture. Let's take. So the queen's going to get hit. And I think we just come back. But I'm interested in coming Sorry, here. But it's going to block our knight. So do we just come back again? We're going to get challenged no matter what. So I think if we come here. White square bishop is momentarily out of the picture. Put a check on the king. Maybe bait a pawn. Or are they just going to take the um, bishop off? So the way that they're moving the pieces looks a little bit like, oh, it's a bit arty, yeah. So I'm going to put these at the higher end, which is like 1400. I'm going to put them at 1400 to begin with. Just bring this bishop here, looking maybe to attack, but then they've got this pawn here. Yeah, 1400, I'll put them at just on these types of maneuvers that they've made. More pawn moves than anything else. Queens being under attack. Knights in. Could move it to the other side of the board. Don't have any issues with that. Are we giving them space to jump with their fancy knight? Let's just bring the queen here. It was always going to get chased. We're trying to maybe castle on this side. So let's see what other attack they got on the queen now. So we're kind of really just trying to bait them into attacking our queen. Oh no. 1400 definitely with these pawn pushes coming down towards our potential kingside castling area. Have they missed anything from what we can potentially do? I'm going to just bring the knight out now. So they've got these two to bring out at this moment and the queen as well off the back. Need to make a bit of space for our white square bishop if it's getting into the game. Yeah, this looks more 1400 type traits that have been delivered. Queen's now looking to take the bishop off the board. Yeah, so it's all nice, clever stuff. So the knight's probably looking to jump here, attacking the queen as well as the bishop. Knight is defending this area. The king is defending the area at the moment. So we could look to just hit the queen. Could just look to do that. Just keep it simple. He looks like he's getting ready for a massive attack. I don't really see anything else. I was going to push this pawn to get the white square bishop out. But if we're allowing this type of thing, let's just hit the queen. Simple, simple. Playing a 1400. We have to be care we have to be careful now. They they know some stuff. Positional play. With the little tactics. He might be that hell bent on this area here that he just pushes the pawn down. That doesn't go for the exchange. He's still going for the knight thing anyway. So we're just taking the queen off the board. He's coming for this here with his knight. So we can move the bishop to defend the pawn more to set to still continue with that particular move we'll probably we might get away with getting castled on the king's side now so let's get castled and then a bit of fancy dancing on the night you'd think the bishop probably <coughs> would come here i suppose we hit it So very arty, 1400 level play. They've castled on the, um, the king side where they don't have any real protection with their pawns. On the plus side, their pawns are further advanced up the board, but they do have pockets of distress that we can potentially take advantage of if our bishops and stuff are still in the game. I'm 
with him having so many pawns on the board and he's got two bishops. Uh, we've got two bishops, but it, when I, it looks more clear against white. They're going to have to make space for these bishops. Going to do what we said, just attack the knight. Doesn't have to take, but we're challenging. And we're just doing it from the back. We haven't overextended in any way. It's got all these pawns that I like pushing down, trying to gain some sort of space on the board. So we're going to end up with the two bishops. So we have to utilize the spaces that they, yes, he's taken. The spaces that are available to us. We are attacking this pawn here. And probably push this pawn to here. Give the white square bishop something. Give it some space. Let it breathe. It's not gone for that. So we'll take and be on the rook. So this is what I'm thinking is that, yeah, they are 1400. They're good at putting the initial attack on but maybe lacking in the defence of their pieces coming in from mid-game to the end game. Fingers crossed, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Rook's move still kept us with this space here, so we're wanting to block this pawn, like we said. Potentially looking to try and make space around the king area because of the airiness, so we're going to push here onto this pawn. Bishop needs to come off the back, or it could be the rook, and then the rook coming around, but we'll just do this for now. So at least it's linking the rook, so potentially coming here, excuse me, coming here to come here, but as we know, rook's in the centre of the board. Okay, so this pawn has pushed down. Could attack the bishop because it's got no protection. I think I'm going to do that first. So it's hard when you're doing it against the two bishops. I mean, trying to get into here. Okay, let's hit the bishop, but it's blocking off this passageway as well, which is a bit annoying. You know, the passageway we wanted, which was the rooks coming here. So we could bring the rook up. There's no point attacking that pawn, though, is there? We did mention in the contradictions, because the bishop's protecting the pawn. But we can get his rook off the board by putting a check on. And then see how it lays from there. What's the big thing? Okay, let's take. So we are on this pawn with the bishop, which would put us onto their rook. But I think the bishop's probably just going to come here attacking our bishop. Oh, not quite. So he's looking for a discover check on our rook. So if we tick this. Yeah, definitely 1400. They know what the pieces can do. They know the positions that they're looking for as well. And now he's got, got our pawn here. But we do have a check on his king. So we win a tempo. So we'd be able to protect... They're chomping at the bit for this discovery thing here. Yeah, you have to watch the 1400 level players. I mean, they're skillful. I don't know if this person's 1400 or not, but um, just based on my experience, it feels like a 1400. So the king moves. We do have another check on the king if we wanted to. But that exchanges the, the bishop. Shall we just continue with what we're doing? We push, then he pushes onto our pawn. We have to move the rook out of the way. If we come behind the pawn, if he takes, then we take, take. No such thing as a new gritty. Well, there is such thing as a new gritty check in this situation, I think. If we go there, this bishop comes here. We take, his king comes down. Mm. 
hit the rook, but he's hitting the pawn. So let's just push this pawn and wait for the pawn to push down. Bring the rook across. Rooks like owning open files, but we can't because the bishop's here. So they do go for that. We said they were chomping at the bit to do that. So let's just bring the rook here. So we calculated up to this point, whether they take or not, then it's up to, we'll have to recalculate. Takes, takes, could take with the rook. Are we feeling a little bit confident? How many pawns do they have? One, two, three. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got a lot more pawns than the opponent, but they do have two bishops. So it could probably just still be equal. So he's attacking the um, bishop and nothing behind there is the could push the pawn supporting I think I'm going to push the pawn past pawns want to be pushed now it's past let's do it supporting the bishop is the bishop going to want to challenge it to get rid of it so that this pawn gets taken mm hmm but not it'll get taken and so some other fancy way maybe nope got 14 minutes left and they've got 12 minutes it is 10 second increment so the king is trying to get into the game the rook doesn't have to need stay there anymore but because of this going to hit the bishop because it is trapped now but it's going to be an exchange hit there he has to move we take king takes that gives freedom for the rook to come here and own the file properly yeah so i'm going to hit the bishop now i don't have to actually take so i could actually still reframe so i could go here when he goes there i could go there i could bring my rook here looking for the ownership then they take then they take so it's a better position for us i think because the rook is stopping the pawn is stopping the king from moving down so I'm actually going to do that. He might not take himself, he might just escape, but then we'll take it for free. So we're looking to potentially get his bishop off the board as well with a check here. But I think we might be a tempo behind takes there, then they'll move the bishop. Not to there, to maybe to there. But slowly trying to improve our position utilizing the contradictions if anything and basically trying to enhance the position it's not looking too bad for us at the moment yep so We'll see how it pans out because I can make mistakes, I can blunder pieces left, right and centre. But based on the basics of what we know, ownership of this file is quite good. Yeah, so they do take, so we'll take here. Like we said, it's um, stopping the king from moving here now. And we do have this, but I think they're going to see that. So this bishop is going to move. Or the king's going to move, whichever. I hope they don't. I hope they do a pawn push and we can get the bishop off the board. I'm always concerned when the rook can then go to the other side of the board and there's an open file because his rook can actually put a check on our king here, winning a bit of tempo. It's blocked it. It's blocked it. See, there's always something in there. Right. So we have more pawns. Would be tempting to do that, but the bishop is there at the moment. Could bring the bishop all the way back here. But then he'll be on this pawn. How do we want to play this then? Didn't factor that in at all. Rook comes there, rook takes, bishop takes, king takes. That doesn't work. Hmm. I don't think it's as bad as we think. It's just this pawn is not supported, really, is it? So do we get the king 
up and up and up. Don't really like it being on the side there, but maybe here. Yep. Oh, but then it's got ideas, aren't you? Coming around here, around here, around here. Let's move the king up. Yeah, we have to be mindful. Blind spots, it's okay trying to go and support this pawn, but he could champion this area quite nicely and just peel that pawn off. Should we not be pushing this pawn as well, actually? I think there's a danger zone here. His rook can come here, get a check on the king, work its way around the back, or get to this position here where he's attacking both pawns. Yeah, that's the danger zone. So I think we need to get activated. Rook up before he starts thinking of that. Rook up. King can't come and get it. With the idea of potentially putting a check on here. King comes there. Check here. King comes there or something. Looks a bit more activated, doesn't it? And then we maybe come back around and attack the rook. I don't think we're going to be fast enough. I'm going to throw it up there, round the back. I think that's more, excuse me, this rook situation here coming round and being able to attack potentially both these pawns. And I can't do anything about it. I mean, I suppose the bishop could come here to protect that area, so maybe that's not too much to worry about. So I have to just play it carefully, looking at the what the opponent can do to me. Try and circumvent that movement. Right, yeah, okay, I didn't throw that in there, did I? Right, so he's moved the king before we can get it set into that. So we can put the... Oh, sorry, we said we could get the rook off now. Yeah, so if we can get the rook off, we've got more pawns. And these two centre pawns, he's probably going to have to give up his bishop, isn't he? So we're going to just bring the rook, attacking the rook. If he doesn't take, we take the bishop for free. If his king comes back, we take the rook. So I think he has to take... So we're on this pawn, he's obviously going to come and attack the bishop. Could attack their pawn. Okay, let's go here. Could attack their pawn. He drops. We take... Oh, no, 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 no. His bishop's going to be taking this pawn. So we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're just going to go here. So we could push this pawn. Take it nice and steady. There's no rush. Okay, so let's lock it down a little bit. So the thing for me is... thing for me is, does his bishop get around the back somehow? There's no space at the minute. I'm just thinking, could, did they get to this pawn? That'll take a while, it looks like. So if we pushed up, we're locking it down. If we take, and then it takes, then we take, then we're on a white square, and we've got another pawn for them to contend with. I think taking is probably better. Because even if they push down, then we can just take. Yeah, so, oh, no, we're not on a white square. We've left them on a white square. <laughs> oh, that picture looked different in my head. So I'm going to push this onto a white square, making a little bit of movement up. Oh, that was silly. Maybe try and get this up, but I think doing that is just going to get around here, isn't it, with his king? And then I'm stuck babysitting the pawn. But if I can push and get behind it, maybe. But he's got these pawns to contend with as well on the back. But my problem is he's got he's gonna come and get this pawn. I need to just 
I've done it wrong. Let's push here. And then inch in, inch in from one side to the other. If we can get this king up, just pushing it up a little bit at a time, supporting this pawn. I don't think it'll get far, but maybe it doesn't need to. This bishop's managing this square, so it's potentially this pawn that needs to be needs to be the king pin. And we need to keep this diagonal with this bishop really supporting this pawn. So that's the whole solution for me as far as I can see. Bring the bishop back, get this pawn pushed up. Which one's key? This one's key, this pawn here. It will get challenged. Bishop probably coming here. Push, king can't come across, but start facing them off. But we've got this pawn that potentially is going shooting up. So it's coming back down for the pawn now. That's what I thought they were going to do. And I'm very scared of moving my king here because the bishop's just going to come and put a check on it. So do we just push it here onto a white square? Yeah, push it onto a white square. We'll focus on these two a little bit later on. If he goes any further across, it gives us tempo. We'll just bring this bishop back. Start pushing one, two. Oh, he's bringing this bishop into life already. Right, so it's kind of stopping that situation. So if we bring the bishop here, like we said, and then try and potentially get this one promoted. <laughs> Although his king will go across here. So with the bishop doing that manoeuvre, it is in a way stopping this one from pushing any further up. Let's push. Didn't think his king was going to come that far across. I thought he was going to come and get these then. There must be some sort of rhythm to these pawn pushes that I'm doing now. And really, I want to try and get this bishop off. So I think once this one's gone here, I can bring the bishop here and look to attack their bishop. Just to get it out of the way of protecting this pawn. But we'll see what the opponent does. There might be a rhythm to these pawns and I might have messed it up already even. Oh, and they've resigned. Excellent.